Hi guys, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I'm going to be redoing an old miniature. This is a chair that I got just in a box of dollhouse stuff I got at a garage sale. It was busted up and today I'm going to redo it. So one of the, some of the things that I'm going to use are scissors, or you can use like a box cutter or an X-Acto knife if you're gonna follow along. I'm gonna use Mod Podge and I typically use the matte finish. It still has a little bit of a shine, but it's not super shiny. I'm also going to use tacky glue. You can also glue things with the Mod Podge, but you have to get a brush out for that and so it's just easier for me to have the tacky glue bottle. You'll need a various assortment of like muted tones <laughs> um, or earth tones and so I'll add a few more in there but those are just some examples. I'm going to use some beads that I found. These are some of my daughter's beads she's not using anymore and I'm going to use q-tips. I feel like I've been using q-tips in like almost every single video I've been doing recently but they're very handy so make sure you have a box of q-tips laying around. Also, you're gonna need some paint brushes, obviously one you don't care about too much because we're gonna be sticking it into the Mod Podge. And then if you're following along, grab some old chair that you wanna redo. I'm going to make this one look like an aged leather chair um, because this pattern look, it's pretty neutral, but you know, it doesn't really go into any of my projects. So I just wanted to play around with the idea of making it look like old leather. So I hope you follow along or at least enjoy this process. The first thing I always do when I remake an older miniature is I always fix anything that's wrong with it first. So I think this was built from a kit and maybe the kit just didn't get finished so it doesn't have legs and the seat was coming off. So I'm just gonna glue the seat back on there. There's no reason really for it to come off for me. No one's gonna lose like a tiny cell phone in the seat. So uh, I'm just gonna glue that back on. And if there were any other problems like missing legs, I'm gonna fix that too, but you'll see that later on. I'm going to first take the Mod Podge and I'm going to paint it over all of the fabric. And this is going to start to give me more of a leather feel and look than a fabric look and uh, this is just going to seal all the fabric. This is also going to be helpful whenever I start putting on my coats of paint because the paint's not gonna soak into the fabric or into the batting that's already inside the chair. So while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the legs. Like I said, I'm going to use the Q-tips and these are just gonna be the insides of the legs and then I'm going to slip the beads over the Q-tips to create these rounded legs. And so I'm snipping the heads of the Q-tips off so that I can get the beads on and I'm going to put a pretty healthy dab of glue on there because I want these beads to stick on here very tightly. So I'm just gonna put them on whatever order. You can use many different kinds of beads. Just make sure that they're, the hole in the bead is wide enough to go around the Q-tip. And I'm gonna make sure the beads touch so that they can glue together. And then I'm just going to set that aside so it can glue and dry. So my chair is drying and the legs are drying. And a lot of times the key to miniatures is to just let it have its dry time. Cause if you keep messing with it and you try to go forward, things are just gonna fall apart. So the best advice I can give you is just let it take its time and dry completely before you push forward. So now the legs are dry and I decided that I didn't like how bubbly the legs looked. So I wanted to carve the pink polka dot bead down a little bit. So I used a box cutter and very carefully, if you're a child or um, are not very confident with a blade, be careful, or if you're a child, get an adult. But if you're not very confident with a blade, just be careful. I got a splinter doing this, but I didn't cut my finger. I just wanted to shave it down to give it um, more of a, uh, 
like a cone shape, I guess. Um, if you don't want to shave it down, you don't have to, but when you cut the Q-tip off, you want to leave about an eighth inch um, on the side that's going into the chair. Before I attach the legs to the chair, I decided to go ahead and give it a coat of black paint. And the reason I'm painting it black is because I'm going to age this chair and put some cracks in the leather. And I don't want the color of the fabric showing through, I want um, the black to show through. So that's why I'm doing a first coat of black. The end, end look is not going to be black. And you can paint this after you attach the legs. I'm not quite sure why I chose to do it before. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but that's what I did. After I've painted the chair and the legs, I'm going to take a drill bit that's about the same diameter as the Q-tip and make small holes in the bottom and I'm going to be very careful not to get my hand. Again, if you are a young person, get an adult to help you. Um, <laughs> but I am going to be very careful to also not drill all the way through the chair. That's very important. <laughs> and uh, I marked out the places first. That's a good tip also so you don't drill in the wrong spot. But then the foot of the chair should perfectly fit into the hole and it will make a better bond when you add the glue. You can just glue the beads straight onto the chair, but it has a better chance of falling off later if you don't go to the trouble of drilling the hole and having some kind of joint in there. So after I get all four legs in, I'm just going to position them, make sure that they are even, there's not one kind of falling off to the side in the weird way, and I'm just going to let that dry. I'm just going to sit it down. Like I said before, the best thing you can do is let it dry. So now I'm going to take Crackle Medium, and if you've never used Crackle Medium before, I'm going to put the name of this one. This is the one I suggest, and you need to put it between your bottom layer which is going to be the color that's going to show through after it cracks, and the top layer, which is going to be your final color. And I'm not putting it all over the chair because I don't want cracks all over the chair. I just want there to be cracks here and there. Um, just like an old chair where some parts are well worn, some parts have cracks. Uh, so when it dries, it stays shiny, so that's why you can still see it. I'm sorry if you can hear my children in the background. <laughs> For some crazy reason, I decided to try and record this before bedtime. I know. <laughs> so finally, I'm going to do my top layer. And when you're dealing with crackle medium, my best suggestion is to get a lot of paint on your brush because that crackle is going to dry out the paint as fast as possible. So you really only have one or two strokes to get the paint on as thick as you want it. If you go back after you put that first coat on there and try and paint over it, it's going to ruin your cracks. So just get a lot of paint on your brush, go over where the crackle medium is, and then it will immediately start to crack. So I'm just going to go over the entire chair um, and you'll see parts of it start to crack and occasionally you can see me kind of go over it and by dragging a brush over it, it pulls the paint off a little bit more. Um, if you decide to try this, just experiment with it on something that you don't really care about. Uh, but it's a really fun process to try and get down. Next, I'm going to make a wash of black paint. Because this is an older chair, I want to put some of the black paint into the corners because, you know, as a chair sits there over years, it's going to collect dust and grime into the corners of the chair. I'm also going to put some on the leather just to give it a bit of a... it, it gives it a little bit of character because, um, you know, chairs kind of absorb that character and there's a hist... I like my 
miniatures to have a history behind them and so that's what stains and blots and drops and all this kind of stuff give character to your furniture and so this part is the part that I really love and have a lot of fun with and you can do this with black you can do this with other colors if it's a really grimy chair you can put some green in there to make it look a little bit like mold but this is the fun part of aging just to um, kind of give a story behind uh, each piece of furniture that you create. Sorry that's off camera a little bit. I am in my new house. I have new lighting and a new setup and it's not perfect. So uh, I'll try and get that figured out. But um, as you can see, you can see that the black is shining through. It's the crackle, like I said, makes it kind of shiny, but you can see the, the black shining through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a final coat of Mod Podge on there. And this is going to give it back that just a little bit of shine. It's going to give it that leather look. It's also going to seal the cracks for me. And it's going to, um, as you can see, the cracks were shiny and the matte finish acrylic paint was not shiny. And putting the matte Mod Podge on there is going to give it all one same shine. I don't know if that makes sense, <laughs> but um, if you have questions about that, maybe I can explain it a little bit better in the comments if that didn't make sense to you, but it's going to give it one final coat to protect my work, to make it shine, and then uh, at the end, I have a chair that looks like leather. And, um, so it was really fun to do. I've kind of done this before, but not on a full chair. So I really like the way it turned out. Please let me know if you try and do this. Um, you know, somehow send me a picture if you do it. I'd love to see what you come up with. I think this process would be really fun to try on different colors of leather, say white leather or a black leather and see what kind of effects I could get. I might try that in the future if I come across another piece that needs help. Um, as you can see, I'm pushing on the cushion. I just wanted to show you that the paint and the Mod Podge didn't permanently harden the fabric. So it even feels like leather, which is really cool. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial slash redo um, that I put together. And uh, let me know if you think of anything else you'd like to see me redo. If you have like a cabinet or some miniature that you just don't know what to do with, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you guys have a great week and thanks for watching. Bye.